The updates and new features for the framework that were announced at Laracon are finally released in the latest version of Laravel, which means I get to talk to you about two of my favorite ones and then a couple bonus ones that I really like that were announced by Taylor. So if you haven't checked out this thread by Taylor, be sure to check it out, as well as a couple of videos from the Laravel official channel talking about what is new with Laravel. Now, all of these, or at least most of these, were announced at Laracon. And here's the two that I really like, one that I am going to use quite a bit, and then another that I haven't used yet, but I'm excited to try. The first is the defer function. Now, there's a whole blog post I'm going to link in the description of other people who are walking through exactly what this does. But here's what happens. Instead of returning the response, uh, in a nutshell, instead of returning the response directly in this defer function, it's going to return the response and then spit up a new PHP process in the background to run anything else in this function. Now, this isn't meant to replace queues. This is just saying, hey, if you have something that usually takes a little bit three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, maybe. Maybe you're hitting a external API, or maybe you're sending an email, or maybe dispatching a couple of queues. Maybe you don't wanna do it right on the request. You want to show the user that this actually has happened or is in the process of happening. That's where defer can come in, where in this example that Taylor's showing, you defer sending off a new report or a new queue or a new job, what have you. What I will probably use it mostly for is maybe sending individual emails. That's probably a thing that I am looking forward to using. I really am looking forward to using it in demo specifically because there's a lot to go into setting up a queue. And especially if you're just teaching someone, hey, this should be pushed to the background. is isn't something that should happen in the process of the request, but this is a way to kind of show the right way of doing it without having to set it all up. So that's why I'm looking forward to using it for, but mostly I think for dispatching jobs, anything that takes longer than one or two seconds and I need to show the user, hey, here's a response immediately, but I still want other things to run, then defer is perfect. Again, this should not replace queue jobs. I'll give a little demo of how I'm using it in a particular application. This is just not a real world application, but defer is not meant to be used in replace of queue jobs. Defer is to be used for those things that you just need to move that to the background and not necessarily have to process it right away because defer has no failure safe, like fail safety. You can't defer something and then if it failed, run it again like you can with queue jobs where you can retry jobs, everything like that. Defer is just saying, I want something to happen, just not immediately. And so I think this is gonna be incredibly helpful for people to feel like their PHP applications are fast because it uses uh, PHP FPM, I believe, or fast CGI under the hood. I know that those are similar in a lot of ways, but what's happening is it's just spinning up a new process to run the thing without having to run the thing in that immediate response. One other thing that was not announced at Laracon, but I like because it kind of has a really cool story of how this came to be, this win helper function. I released a video a week or so ago about running background jobs with multiple steps. And in it, I talked about having to have this if block where I say, if this particular method or this particular status, then wire pull. And I was saying kind of in the comments that it'd be nice if I didn't have to do that, like wire pull if or something. And then smarter people than me, Josh Hanley and Dan Matthews kind of came up with the idea of what would happen if there was a at win directive, which eventually turned into this win helper function, which came to be in the latest release of Laravel. So it's cool how open source like Laravel has this ability to have conversations with people like Dan Matthews and Josh Hanley, where now you have the opportunity to change the things you like about the things and the tools that you use. And while I didn't make this change, I am incredibly grateful for people like Josh Hanley and Dan Matthews who proposed this change and made this change happen, where we have this win helper. I'll show it that in a little bit. Next is this info method. So instead of having this like log facade helper, it's just this global info method to be able to say, hey, I just wanna log something. I have been using this a little bit more. If I'm just whipping up some demos, usually I might use like Ray from Spotsy for some more detailed logs. But instead of like DD, I just might use log. 
and then I use PHP Artisan Pale or it just gets sent to my herd logs. And then ooh, the last two honorable mentions would be the temporary URL on local file system, which is incredibly helpful. I love this within my S3 systems, but now you can do it locally. And then lastly, concurrency facade to be able to run multiple things at the same time. And you can also use it in the same context of deferred. So we can say, I want to run all these things, but now defer them to the background. <laughs> That's awesome, right? Now I can run all of these, in this case, jobs or queued jobs, or maybe even batch queued jobs that I now want to concurrently run, but defer them to the background. So concurrency is kind of just like an additional helper with a defer method to make those things really happen in sync to be able to say, I want two things to happen at once and concurrency is great to make that happen. So I'm really excited for that particular feature. I haven't created any demo kind of demoing that or even used it in any of my projects yet, but I know that that is going to be extremely helpful, especially when you know, two things, two jobs need to happen at once. And maybe like you're setting up a whole new project for someone within your application and five things need to happen instead of having to do those linearly. Now we can do those concurrently and even defer to the background. Maybe we use the, the win method to wire pull for each of those until it has been set or that status has been set. I'm extremely excited for all of these. Let's jump into a, a demo. So here is the defer and win method, as well as the log method, just for fun. In this Volt component, I have two states, state of message and is polling is true. Now, previously in my other video, I had to do some weird stuff of like uh, at if is polling. And then I do a bunch of other stuff to say, I want to, you know, run this with the wire pull, or maybe I can split it out and do the at it at if inline, which is fine, but it, it gets a little messy. It gets a little cumbersome. And now this win method has makes this a lot easier. Uh, double bang win is pulling double bang is necessary uh, for the wire pull function, the method that wire pull needs. So that way it doesn't escape those variables. So when is pulling, then we're going to wire pull the check cache method. The deferred message has been set in the in this case, the cache has been set, which is being set in the defer function up here. Then we're just going to turn is pulling to false. So what you'll see happen again, I'm just using kind of the cache to make this happen. This would probably be the same thing as if I was running a background job and changing some uh, enum in the database, or maybe I was changing just a column in the database that it was is finished to true. And then I'm constantly just checking the database here instead of checking the cache. So this is based on a real world method. But this particular instance is probably not something you would be doing in your application. But there's a bunch of times when you need to do something in the background. And maybe this is just deferring to run a cute job in the background, but it has to do a couple of things in the interim, maybe send an email and then run a cute job. This defer function is just saying for five seconds, something is going to happen in the background, but I don't want to let the user know that it's happening. I don't want them to wait on that process, that browser request for five seconds, but we're going to put that in the cache, which will then check the cache and that should change and change is pulling as to false. Now here's where the defer method is going to come into handy. We can defer all of this logging the message and that should happen immediately because we deferred it in this case, immediately after the first request has been sent, but then this sleep is going to happen before it puts it in the cache. But this message is going to change before this finishes because this is being deferred. See what I'm saying? So if we take a look, we press defer. What we should say is this message change before the cache gets updated. So press it message change. Hi there folks. And we'll also see then that the deferred message change. So the cache has been set five seconds later. And we see here in our debug that deferring this message has been set. So one more time, we'll refresh defer log set. This is a deferred message. There we go. There is so much potential for a lot of these new features within Laravel. And one of my favorite thing, regardless of me being on the Laravel team or not, because I don't have a hand in any of this stuff within the framework. 
One of my favorite things about Laravel and the community and just open source in general is things like this or the win helper can happen. They can happen by just people having conversations, by people trying new things, by people learning new things, by making silly little videos like this. And then we just learn new stuff like this. Most of this was not in the framework a year and a half ago, including Volt. Literally this whole page would not exist if people didn't start iterating over things and learning new things and building new things. And I'm grateful for every single thing on this page, including Volt, because it's my favorite. But yeah, so keep learning, keep creating.